And from the Hebrew, it's related to the word kaya, which means a living thing. It means to step up which means that the numerical number 18 consequent that the custom has arisen among the Jews that money must be given for people to receive their blessing. Yeah. 18 as an expression means blessings for long life. Hallelujah. And 2 times 9 is 18. And nine is a number of third dimension. Simple mean step up and get the job done. Oh, somebody clap their hands and give the Lord praise. Imagine a church business meeting where a discussion of Bobby's financial concerns resulted in an immediate flood of generosity. Imagine that the members of your congregation had only gave enough on the spot to meet every need, but they also kept giving to the point that you had to beg them to stop. Could some say, Lord, bring back that spirit in the church? Oh, bless the Lord. Well, that's exactly where Moses found himself in Exodus chapter 36. And that spirit is still available. That people will learn to give. God's people were in the early stages of the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness. And the call went out for contributions. While gifted craftsmen donated their time and talents, other Israelites made free will offerings to the project. In fact, scripture tells us that the people gave much more than enough and overwhelmed the workmen with their generous gifts. Eventually, there was a command. Moses sent out a plea to stop giving and the people had to be restrained because they want to bless the house of God. When you start loving God, you will be concerned that I don't need to have dust for too long under my feet. I want to have good carpets and good chandeliers in the house. Nobody want to be excited about the God. We've got to realize that there's nothing that we have that belongs to us. If God gives you something, he wants you to know it belongs to him. And so a church leader, that may sound like a nightmare. Oh my God, somebody said that's beyond our reach. But if we really believe God owns it all, and we are called to manage his resources, incredible generosity can't become a thing of the past. Because God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And God wants to bless, but He first said, I need to give. God still wants His people to become cheerful givers, and leaders still have the responsibility to encourage a culture of generous giving in the church. With that in mind, we got to realize that the Bible line get serious about financial giving. Many pastors avoid talking about money from the pulpit because they're afraid because there are some scammers in pulpits that are trying to get rich overnight. But they are those who are genuine and want to build a sanctuary where they can give the Lord the praise. Or oh, somebody clap their hands and give the Lord praise. Thank you.
In fact, he talk about money. The Lord Jesus Christ more than any other topic. Because he understood the relationship between biblical stewardship and living an abundant life. If we avoid talking about money and there's a crisis, we only feed the misunderstanding many church members have about giving. A better way is to find a healthy balance. Let nobody tell that pastor trying to trick you to get your money out of your pocket. You're not building a sanctuary to live in. You're building a sanctuary to the name of the Lord. And God is more interested in seeing the sanctuary being built to host his people than even the pastor could see. The need for building. Yes. And so we get ourselves in trouble. And so many end up putting their money where thieves break through and steal. And scammers turn up. And Sponsy scheme turns up. But thanks be to God. Luke 638 said, Give. And it will come unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. And running over. Shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure. That you meet with all. It shall be measured to you again. And the word again means. It shall be in return. For the virgin tithes and offering cannot be given to the pastor for a blessing. If you come here to give the pastor tithes and offering, you'll leave being disappointed. When you come here, let them give it to God. Oh Lord. And when you give it to God, you can walk away with confidence that God will bless me. I'm not here to put any money in any man's pocket. I'm here to laid in the storehouse and God said prove me here we can if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing Hallelujah. and so brethren and friends why he said that there may be meat in my house God wants to have meat in his house Change the way you think. I'm not bringing money to some man. I'm bringing money into God's storehouse for a blessing. And even if my pastor spends it, that's not my problem. I gave it to the Lord and I will receive my blessing. When you bring money to the house of God, don't think anything as that I'm giving this to God. Connect yourself to give it. Now somebody give the Lord praise. People long to be part of something bigger than themselves. That's why your members need to know that their gifts don't just disappear into an offering plate on Sunday morning. But the Bible let me know when I bring my gifts to the house of the Lord, I'm storing up in heaven. I'm not naive. Nobody tricking me. I'm investing in the kingdom. And as long as I'm investing in the kingdom, no teeth can break through and seal. No rock nor moss can corrupt. I'm not investing in some earthly thing. I'm investing in the kingdom of God. And if I invest in the kingdom of God, I cannot go broke. Oh Lord. Matthew 6, the Bible said, verse 19. Lay up for yourself. Lay not up for yourself, sorry. Treasures upon earth. Where the moth and the rust corrupt. The sponsor king, bank liquidize. The get rich sick 
queen syndrome but the lay of scriptures in heaven heaven never suffer recession heaven has no devaluation if you put your trust in God oh somebody give the Lord praise let God know that you trust him and God will trust you to bless you my message might sound strange how can God trust me if you don't trust me you won't give me anything someone got to trust you to give you a million dollars that you won't take it for your own self God wants to trust you to bless you God don't want when he start blessing you you stop serving him or somebody give the Lord praise if God blessing you and you keep on serving him he will keep on blessing you Lord help us what a God I'm closing farmers can produce a harvest without carefully preparing the land planting the seeds rooting out the weeds and tending the field likewise churches can't reap a benefit from eras that have been ignored creating a culture of generosity takes time there's no shortcut to get there no one can pull a string for you we serve a more than enough God. He longs to make a difference in the world. And he wants his people to be used to make that difference. He's just waiting for us to join him in his work. God wants to use us to get the job done. He's waiting to establish us a more than enough culture god is unchangeable he said in malachi 3 3 i am the lord i change not he's unchangeable in his nature god cannot suffer an eclipse he still expressed in his brightness god's essence shines with a fixed luster oh somebody give the lord praise that's why james said in him there is no shadow of turning and so you cannot lose your investment if you are invested in the kingdom oh somebody clap your hands and give the lord the praise and no matter what you're going through you need to put your trust in the lord it's not too big for god to bless you it's not too big for god to lift you up and prosper you. You belong to him and he belongs to you. Hallelujah. 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 What a God. 2018. The year of blessings. Yes. Living a life. I'm closing. But oh, here what I was reading from the text that we read previously. He said concerning what you have give and it will come back to you it will be given unto you pressed down shaken together and not run over but keep on running over are we are here today yes Oh Lord, somebody give a lot of thanks. It's a present continuous action. And let the ninth anniversary be a time of change. A time at a new dimension. That God is going to take over. And God 
is gonna promise me. It's not by your sweat and blood. It's what Christ did on Calvary. It was not what your father. It was what God thought about before the foundation of the world. It is not your effort. Ask your neighbor, are you a part of this? We serve a God of abundance who is consistently more than enough. We are called children of God and His grace gives of sufficiency in all things that we may have an abundance for good work. Hallelujah. The God of power and provision is always the God of more than enough. You cannot invest in God and be a loser. Anybody want to be blessed tonight? When pastor wants to me, when your money going down, start putting more in the church. And if you start doing that, watch what God's doing for you. This is your sanctuary. This is your sanctuary. You feel better when you are here than when you are at your own home. Yeah. Hello? You don't jump and scream that much when you are at home. You don't shake many hands when you are at home. You don't feel the anointing rocker rocker in you. Oh, somebody give him all the praise. You have more pleasure in this place than when you are at your own home. For in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hands, there are pleasures from heaven. I find more joy in this house. You know, I look at those young ladies. I'm closing. Acting in that dust, that dirt. Yeah. And I said, oh my God, they need a nice carpet. Yes. And if they had a nice carpet, they would have done it much better. But if they're doing that on dirt, oh what won't they do on carpet? They're doing all praise. If you're feeling the anointed and the place looks so dirty, and when you clean up the place and you can roll all over the place, you can put a hand down and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah! You know something very bad? People have a bad term to say cleanliness is next to godliness and they say that the Bible says so and they say a whistling woman and a crowing hen is an abomination to the Lord and they say the Bible says so look how many people get the Holy Ghost in this dirty place Amen Amen Hello. Mm. Mm. I'm closing. Let me just say what I want to say. Every member of this church needs to open their mouth and speak what they desire to see in this house. If you see empty benches, lay your hands as a God fill them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I rejoice in it if you're filling them. If you need to see your balcony and your brand new roof and your chandelier, open your mouth and speak it with confidence. Hey. Don't you see them as if God is wrong? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I was preaching the other day. I was telling brother, many of us here, Gail. I was in Canada. And I was teaching on the name of the Lord and the oneness of God. And this lady just stood up in the church and stopped me. Mm. Says, sir, do you have a car? You hear the question I'm asking again. I said, no. Oh, sir, the Lord said, I need to give you mine. Yeah. It's parked up in case and when you go back to Jamaica, you get to this address and tell it to give you the key. Amen. And we went up there and asked for the key. Amen. And we asked for the car. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And we took the car straight home. Are we all here today? Amen. God said, to give that's what she said, God said to give you. Yes. You know where I was? In Bishop Thompson's church. He laughed. He said, good God. What did she say? <laughs> that's Bishop Thompson in Toronto. Yes, yes. Town Hill, that's what they call it. D.W. Thompson. Yes. Amen. He said, what did she say? She said, I must go to Jamaica, get up to Kingston, get to our house, ask for the key and the car, and take it in the lungs to me. Amen. Minister Brown is here, you can ask him where is the car. It's in my garage and my wife driving down to some funeral. Yeah, that's right. Sir. Your car. God give you that. Nothing is impossible for God. That's right. If you invest in the kingdom. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Some Hallelujah. People, Reverend Gabe, you know my office. A lot of books, over a million dollars worth of books, two million or so computer. You know they burn out my office? Burn out every book, every computer, every record. When you ask for your transcript, I don't even tell you anything. I ask you to find all the courses you did and send it to me. They burn up everything and say them burn me out. Mm. Are we all here? Amen. Are we all here? Amen. When I call our mission, I say, our kind of spirit that that person are burn up all the Bible. Mm. Hallelujah. Virgin, since that time, the Bible school has grown more than double. Mm. We have Bible school in Holiness Born Again organization. I will tell you all the organization that always use Bible school as their message to preach against it. Say so it is not of God. Mm. Those same bishops call me, sit down beside the bed and say, I always preach it. But I realize that if you don't sit down and study with your members, they can't learn. And you can't just open the Bible and read one verse and say, yeah, interpret it. You've got to understand the exegesis behind the text. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And we have so many organizations now where we're doing the systematic study program. People are studying. Check the word study again and see what the word means. It doesn't mean to read. No, Check the Hebrew word study to show thyself. It doesn't mean to open your Bible and read. It means employ someone who knows more than you, who can instruct you into what is written in the book. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. You see, I have this little Bible. Let's call it Orthodox Jewish Bible. I needed it from a long years ago. I didn't know how to buy it or where to buy it. It's both English and Hebrew. It's Revelation. Whatever. Amen. Thank you. And I was just in Canada preaching and I went to America and I went to one of my brother's home from South Camp Road. Yes. Hello? Amen. So I saw this little book put down there in a plastic. Somebody said, what are you doing in that book? He said, brother, I don't even understand it. <laughs> every time you read a word, there's another word beside it that I don't understand. He said, let me read it. 
And he said, oh. So it's Hebrew and English mixed up together. It's an Orthodox Bible. He said, I don't even know what to do with it. You can take it if you want it. My God! <laughs> I said, please, please, what's the cost? No, 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 doc. I won't sell you. You will have more use for it than me because I can't even read it. <laughs> so my wife was listening to her. She said, you really mean what you say? She said, what's the way I do it? We just run quick. I'm pushing up every face. I said, you can touch my chair, you are mine. Then went into my briefcase and took out a Jewish Bible and gave it to her. And she said, oh my God, I love this. I said, thank you very much. <laughs> because she didn't know that I was loaded with Jewish Bible coming from America. Whoa, who will heat me a care and become sell? <laughs> and I wanted one of these. And she had it on her shelf. So I don't understand it. Amen. And I just took it up and walk away with it. Say, God, because you love me. I'm glad she don't understand it. <laughs> it should be that we get it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is impossible. Yeah. If you invest in the kingdom, yes. God will bless you. Tell anybody, about this is your sanctuary. This is your sanctuary. This is your sanctuary. <laughs> you know, Herod built the temple in Jerusalem, and the Lord Jesus went in there and called him, This is my father's house. Yes. Because it's dedicated unto the Lord. Yes. I just need to speak this way to you today. Yes. This is your sanctuary. Yes. Don't be afraid to invest yes. in the sanctuary. Yes. God must bless you. Nobody can say amen. Nobody yes. can say God must. God must bless you. Your people say, I receive my blessing right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm holding out. You see what in the Bible here? The Bible said, You shall receive. But you know what this Hebrew one said? When you come to God, don't wait to receive. Because what you desire is already given. Yeah. So when you come to God, take what you want. Oh God, I'm going to give you praise. He that believeth on me, as the scripture said, the Bible said, shall. But I want to quote to you. He said, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock. So why you have to do all of that? Yeah. What the Lord is saying, set your attitude right. Yeah. When, you want, when you want to get anything from him. How do you ask? You know those days, probably might be more senior than I am. Not necessarily. Bite off in the air. And keep going to the dirt. Yes. <laughs> Can I have this? <laughs> Can I? Amen. And we got nothing. Yes. What did the Bible say we should do when you come into God? If you come to God boldly, yes. God must respond to you boldly. Yes. I'm, I'm true, I'm true. I'm just talking to you. I'm telling us, lift your faith. This is the air of the third dimension for your blessing. Yeah. And not even the devil from hell can stop you from going. Yeah. Don't worry about no money. You need to pay at the bank. All God said, preach. Yeah. When the souls come, where are you going to put them? It's not your trouble. Hallelujah.
Oh God. God promised to supply. All. God promised to supply. All. Some of what we need. All. All. More than enough. Have confidence. Yes. This is your sanctuary. You can ask Minister Brown, when I went here to this church, the amount of people in the church without the Holy Ghost, the choir, the musicians, they no feel. I didn't quarrel with them. I love them. I said, when you're done, when you finish sing, come to the altar. If you can't get the Holy Ghost for your son, come down here. Next thing I take down the whole altar. Quiet. And we have a very good organist there. I tell her the boy, I know music is what he not feel. <laughs> so we're going to start our crusade and they're asking a preacher to come who's going to charge about $30,000. Mr. But I don't have no $30,000 and that good young man can play music good. So I just when the, after the service was coming to an altar call, he was there playing the organ. Somebody just walk up and say, hello, come down. You're not going back up there and take the ship. Yeah. And he look at me. I said, you're not going back up there and take your feet. And he come down to the altar. I think he was the third person start talking talks. Oh, bless God. When he finished the crowd, don't play the organ. He couldn't even touch it. The power of God was all over him. I said, you've got to teach the people the word and let people know that God is a very positive thing. That's right. That's okay. Amen. Thank you very much. You know I have a very bad attitude at the new church, am I? Very bad attitude. Anything you say I'm going back? Mr. Take it out. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Take it out. <laughs> One lady didn't like it. She sent four mics from give me. Just say, go and use them. Brand new. Another lady didn't like it. She go buy one cardless and give me. I said, this is God's house. And you must speak it like you believe it. Hallelujah. I want to turn to you, neighbor. I want you to bless everyone. Don't worry about your service closing. I'm not closing your service. I want you to repeat the priestly blessing to your neighbor. Stand up, everyone. Don't worry about the man.